Well, good morning from the Oklahoma's Video Studio. Dave Morris alongside Mike Knopp, Executive Director of the Oklahoma City Boathouse Foundation. Great to see you as always. Good to see you, Dave. Yeah. Uh, had some warm weather this weekend and thousands of athletes yeah. out there competing. Yeah, it was beautiful. We had a great weekend at the river with the Central Youth Rowing Championship and uh, athletes from all over this region were here competing for their chance to get to the world, to the, well, not the world championship, but the national championship in California. And um, it was great. I mean, we had, you know, we overcame quite a challenge last week with this storm that came, rolled through Oklahoma City and had this huge, huge, heavy rains. And, and anything that happens at the river, you know, you kind of worry about what's going to what, what, what's going to come? What, what are yeah. perhaps some of the potential obstacles there? What are some concerns you guys look for after you have? Because we do get, hey, it's not just a shower, it's a monsoon. It's a monsoon. It looked like a hurricane, I tell you. <laughs> and, um, well, the issue was when we had our, you know, we have to put our race course in for these events in advance. It's, it's quite an undertaking for our staff. And it's, you know, thousands of uh, meters of cable and buoys. And so okay. when you put that in the river, and the cables go about five feet under the water with a leader line with the buoys, and there's thousands of buoys, and that's a lot of things for th for debris to get hung up on. Gotcha. Or when you have that fast flow, um, you know, can that uh, it, it poses a risk that the, that could take the course out, and that's ha it has happened in the past. But you know, it seems like so just as soon as we get the course in, we get the bad weather. Of course, so, yeah. Of course. So we. Um, We've taken some measures to kind of help mitigate that, and the team was really good about uh, certain techniques they used to kind of keep the course in good order while that rain came in, and um, and, we, and it was fine. It, we saved it. The only issue we had was, you know, the debris, which we can't really control. When all that rain comes up, it comes in through all the tributaries, and that's why we really encourage people, don't throw your trash out, because it literally does end up in the river. And so... Um, we, we did a lot of debris cleanup, trash cleanup, thanks to the city crews were great as well, helping out um, and did the best we could. We had, turns out on Saturday and Sunday, we had great racing, beautiful weather. Um, people love the venue. The water was frankly a little uh, reddish in color, but you know, that's what you get with, uh, with the Oklahoma red dirt. And, and I think everyone was very appreciative that we could pull off an event like that after that kind of heavy rain, and it went really well. Yeah, and a couple other things. One person who was there perhaps to take in some of this was the U.S. Rowing CEO, uh, Patrick McNerney. Am McNerney, I saying that right? Yeah, yeah okay. he's, uh, he came in for the first time. He had, it's the first time he'd been in Oklahoma City since the 1989 Olympic Festival, wow. which was... So we had a lot to show him. He was, he was very, very impressed. First and, of all, rowing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he came in, you know, we, the first, our first stop was like Overhaul, sir, because that's where the Olympic Festival was for rowing. Um, and, uh, that, so of course, that's been renovated since then. And he was, he was excited to see that. Then, of course, was blown away by, he said, pictures just don't do the Boathouse District judge justice. And to see the scope of everything. Um, he was he was very enthusiastic about it, and you know he was in the sport back in the late '80s and early '90s, um, and then left and went um, worked uh, uh, elsewhere for, for for a long time with his career and in, um, in in sports marketing and worked in events like Wimbledon and other big big wow. big events, and then was recruited back to be the C become the CEO of U.S. Rowing just last year. Um, and to look for places that and, and opportunities to add more media exposure and you know to the sport and that you know we're a, a perfect place to do that we're the only place in the world that you can light up a race course with stadium lights so I mean we I mean there was just it was it was great for him to see and I thought it was a great weekend so uh, one thing uh, we spoke about a couple weeks ago Lyric Theater having a fundraiser out there and that was I believe Friday night right outside yeah. uh, the Rapids yeah it was great um, uh, Broadway and Brews, and they had a great crowd, a great crowd, and, and just the, the, I think the atmosphere that is created there by the water, by both the river and the whitewater rapids, when the water is not on, we've got a big giant pool, very beautiful area, and the building itself, and so I think uh, it introduced a lot of people to the, to the venue and um, kind of what we're trying to create down there. There are two opportunities from one event that are headed your way. You perhaps could be in the Olympics and on an NBC documentary, we're talking about the next Olympic hopeful, the Scouting Camp coming Scouting up. Camp that's coming up on May 19th. We're one of only three locations in the country, as we've said before, which is, I think, quite a big deal that the U.S. Olympic Committee is coming to Oklahoma City to tr try to find their next well, their next Olympic hopeful. And um, 
And so this is open to anybody and you can register online or you can just show up. And uh, you know, we're really specifically looking for, there's, there's select sports that we believe finding you know, athletes who, may, who will transition or transfer from other sports who could become you know, a, uh, a bobsledder or a skeleton athlete, um, a weightlifter, a rower, a kayaker. And so uh, we're going to really use this event to, to identify those, those folks. And when you show up, you're going to go through f five or so tests from max pull-up pull test to a, a, a one-mile run and, and several other things. So it's, it, it's, it's just a great opportunity to just see, it's just for fun, see if you have what it takes. And, we're, you know, a lot of collegiate athletes who could, could come out and try something new and realize you could find yourself at the Olympic Games. Again, that's coming up Saturday, May 19th. Uh, you can find information on their website at riversportokc.org. Uh, but that's also a busy weekend for you with the Whitewater Festival. You got the Michelob Ultra Bodocross Extreme yeah. Racing uh, activity on the pump track. Bass Pros giving away a kayak. It's a, quite a weekend. We're excited about it. We're going to have, um, boat, like you said, Michelob Ultra Bodocross, which literally we've got the ramp built now this next weekend will be the testing period anyone who wants to try can do it have you and tried it yet i have not tried okay. it but but uh it looks fun it looks fun yeah it's uh you you fall several feet like you know like going off a waterfall into the rapids <laughs> and then from there you have to fight your way down the course and execute combat roles and other things as you're going down it's full contact um nice. It'll be exciting for spectators to watch, and and it's open to anyone to participate in. Um, but it's a it's an actual official discipline. They have these races in other parts of the world, and so something we're introducing here, very uh, like I said, very spectator friendly. Along those lines, we have the Red Bull Pump Track World Championship Qualifier and our our uh, world class pump track. We've got people coming in from all over the country for that. Um, um, just a lot of really cool things to see, you know, that weekend. And then you can go rafting yourself or, or take part in, in, in any of the other adventures that are going on. We're, we, um, we're going to be giving away a kayak with uh, our friends at Bass Pro Shop. Cool. So just show up. You can register for that. Um, so just a lot, a lot going on that weekend. There you go. It's the, the weekend of May 19th mm -hmm. and 20th. Again, riversportokc.org. Uh, for a calendar of events and schedules and more information. This past Friday, you joined our colleague Steve Lackmeyer, and thank you for doing oh, that yeah. for a, a, a live online chat on newsok.com. And every Friday, he talks about development around the urban core. This mm -hmm. this week, well, for a couple hours, mm -hmm. uh, you chatted for at length, uh, filling people's questions about development along mm -hmm. the uh, the Oklahoma River. We mentioned that pump track, which is one of the newer mm -hmm. uh, amenities that you have. Somebody asked you about a dog park. Yes, that's a new. That's something new that's coming. We we have a, a couple of supporters that are helping us put that together, and it's something we've wanted to do for some time. It really goes well with with the the whole lifestyle, uh, you know, experience we're trying to create down there. Just to bring sure. your dog and hang out and enjoy the day, and we have a, a great location for it. It's going to be right next to the McClendon Whitewater Center, so you can bring your dog and get the restaurant and the bar right next door. So it'll be just a really cool place to hang out right next to the river. And we're gonna add some agility features so dogs can be active nice. just like humans Very in the nice. in the venue. So good thinking. Yeah. So it'll be fun. We're hoping that'll debut actually pretty soon here in the next few weeks. Oh cool. I, I think that's a very good idea. Very complimentary yeah. again, as yeah. you mentioned, to the whole lifestyle mm -hmm. aspect you have out there and dog agility course who wouldn't want to watch that yeah exactly <laughs> someone else had a, a question about a parking garage and you threw out a step further yeah what if we did do that and then maybe put a climbing wall on the outside yeah exactly you know everything we do we try to you know make it fit the venue and that's where when we think about complementary development over time that's always the standard is it's it's got it we don't want to um we we want it to complement this world-class venue and and the and kind of the, again, the lifestyle, the adventure aspects that we've introduced down there. And so if we're gonna do a parking garage at some point down the road, what can we, what, what, what can we do to make it different or complement the venue? And I think climbing along the wall would be, along those walls, you've got big vertical walls, you might sure. as well use, use them for something. And so that, that's kind of what we're thinking. Yeah. Seems like a very good idea. One, one last question from that chat that I'll throw you away. 
Uh, and by the way, you can find that chat at newsok.com uh, or just go under Steve Blackmire's page. You can find a link there. Various things were, uh, were mentioned and discussed, including I'd forgotten about the USS Oklahoma City yeah. uh, being relocated yeah. out there at some point. But one of the questions was um, any discussion on connecting the canal to the river and uh, just how do you get from Bricktown mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Boathouse District? Well, it, it underscored to me, we, we got a lot of education to continue to do that for people to realize that it's really a, it's easy to get from Bricktown into the Boathouse District. Um, you know, I spoke with uh, downtown Oklahoma City uh, last week with, uh, with Jane Jenkins and others about how can we maybe do some things programming wise to, to emphasize that connection? Because literally all you have to do is head south from the canal and the canal, uh, the Bricktown Canal actually terminates right by Interstate 40 and then you just walk down a ramp and you get onto the River Canal which goes underneath uh, Interstate 40 in a big tunnel and then ends up uh, right at the river. And so it's actually a very nice walk, um, very easy. I think we want to enhance that probably with some wayfinding and signage. You know, the Bricktown Canal is like a big pool, kind of like the River Sport Rapids. I mean, it's, a, it's fully enclosed city water and then the river canal is the river so they don't really want to interconnect and there's an elevation difference mm -hmm. um, but but they are essentially connected with trail and, and uh, it's just very easy to get from one to the next so very good again you can find more uh, of the questions and answers from that chat online at newsok.com mike uh, as always we appreciate your time and uh, good luck with everything but before we go this upcoming weekend we got to acknowledge it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, and um, we love to see uh, mom, moms out at the river enjoying sure. their, themselves, and so we're trying to really promote that this weekend, where um, if, you, if you buy a pass, mom gets in free. Cool. And, uh, <laughs> there's yeah, mom. There's mom. mom. Hashtag mom, mom right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's like we've said before, rafting and what we have is such a great family activity, and um, we're making you know family memories out there, and and one of those things is we're gonna comm commemorate Mother's Day with a free photo for mom that we have. Very cool. We have photographers along the rapids that take your picture, and so we'll offer that for free. And then also, um, if you buy <laughs> buy an entree and Big Water Grill, mom gets one for free. So uh, we really wanna, again, this is a great time to say thanks to mom and, and, and just come out and have fun with the family and enjoy the, enjoy the day. All right, very good. So that is coming up, of course, on Sunday, May 13th. Mother's Day. Uh, and again, don't forget about the next Olympic hopeful and all the various uh, events happening at the Whitewater Festival May 19th and 20th out there at the Boathouse District. Mike, as always, thanks for your time. Thank you, Dave.